people. So we're um, nearing the end of uh, finishing up all the cladding, which is great. And uh, hopefully there'll be a few more time lapses to add to that on the front of the house as we wrap things up. But I thought before we went any further, um, I'd just do a little bit on all the bits and pieces, the different components that I've used to, to put this in, all the bits and pieces from seed drill and some of the tools and stuff to try and make the job a little bit easier uh, and just how we've got on basically. So. I'll just sort of run through the process and sort of pick things up as we go, try and make sense of it, just so I don't miss anything out. So the first job you'd probably do is set out all your battens. So we have used three by two. Um, it's been a bit inconsistent in terms of the sizing because we've got two different lengths and I think they were machined up differently. So that's made for a slightly wavy um, panel uh, in places where we've got a, a difference in thickness. But you can use packers and that sort of thing to get it bang on. Um, certainly on the masonry work on the front, we've used a lot of packers because that block work's been awful. So we want to get the, that nice and plumb, but also flat in line. So they're all at the same level. Um, so we've used three by two um, to get the correct ventilation space. Cedral, I think want like 38 mil. This is 45, so it's a bit, bit generous, but nevertheless done the job. Um, we've also used four by two on the corners. So they've then matched like that so that you've got a bit more to screw on on either side and that's worked really nicely. I think if I did it again, I might just go for four by two across the board. I think it's more consistent. Um, this is the three by two that we've got is far more warped and bent and just a bit unpredictable. So I'd probably go for four by two in future. Fixings wise, we've used a whole range of different things. Um, uh, hammer fixings, masonry fixings, uh, nails into the timber frame, all sorts. You'd have to make decisions about what you use, what's most appropriate for your project. So once those are fitted, then we've used just DPC uh, with a staple gun tacked on. One thing to make sure that you do, which will make your life a bit easier, is to make sure that at the bottom, you don't leave the DPC hanging below the timber and trim it back ever so slightly, just so that your trims can sit nicely on the bottom. So buttons on, DPC on, and then, the first thing you'll do is fit a closure. Uh, now these, I think, do come in different sizes. This is 40 mil wide. And what happens is that then gets fixed on the front like that. If you can imagine, this is the wall behind here. Uh, use some of the stainless steel screws that come with the clips. I'll show you those in a minute. And fix that on along the bottom to close that. It stops any insects getting in there and making a mess of it. Birds and such, such and such and such. It also gives a nice closure to the uh, the underside so you don't see all your battens. If your battens are projecting from the wall quite a bit and some of ours are down the side because the timber frame oversails the brickwork, what I've used is um, some insect mesh. You can buy this online um, in various sizes and we folded it over just to give it a, like a bit more um, uh, depth in colour so that when it's up there you can't see it through it quite as much. So we folded it over and then that just got tacked behind the uh, the closure before we fitted that so that made up the difference they didn't see the battens in the wall behind so once you've got those in then your next thing is to fit your starter trim now your starter trim looks like this okay and it's got a little ledge for your first board to fit onto now all of this is in relation to a seedral click system a click system uh, is a bit like a tongue and groove system uh, rather than their seedral lap system which are more sort of traditional square edge planks that sit on top of each other you need to level those uh, pilot hole drill and fix those as you go leveling all the way along um different look and you can get two different styles a smooth finish and a grain finish in both options the click and the lap we've gone for the the click i think it's a little bit uh a little bit more more modern more up to date and certainly my view was that once you've set it out and you've got all your um, your fixings in and you've got your bottom row in you can just then crack on after that you're not leveling each individual panel as you go trying to get all gauged up correctly so that's only why i went for that and i would do it again I, i'm not sure i would bother um, i think screwing through uh, having to pine a hole and screw through each individual plank onto each um uh, batten that you fix to the wall it would just be really time consuming and as we're working sort of on some little pitched roofs and that sort of thing unless you had level scaffolding I think it'd be a bit of a nightmare and you certainly need two people and I've managed to do some of this on my own um although the planks are 3.6 meters long that would be a bit of a 
bit of a trick on your own for longer lengths, for smaller panels, definitely um, possible as a one man job or one woman job for that matter. So anyway, back to um, fitting. So you've got your mattons on with your DPC, your closure, which goes in the bottom like that. And then your starter profile, which will fix over the top of that. Okay, now we had to uh, pilot hole and drill through these with a, a metal bit before the screws went in. Um, no drama, you could get self-tapping screws. I've struggled to find self-tapping screws that have a flat enough head. So the screws supplied with the clips have a really nice flat head. Um, we've used a bunch of those for this type of fixing. I wasn't sure whether there was enough, um, whether enough screws were supplied just for the amount of clips, um, but we've supplemented those by getting some extra stainless steel um, screws. We've used those on the clips and they've worked perfectly fine. Those were um, posi screws, um, a little bit easier to use rather than the uh, T15 Torx head um, that is supplied with those screws, which I'll show you in a minute from C-Drill. Um, just a word about that, because they're quite soft, they are stainless steel, um, we've gone through quite a few heads um, that I've sheared off when they hit the metal. So a little bit of uh, trigger control is well well worth it you get the hang of it and certainly that's improved over time so once you've got your your closure and your starter profile then you're into fitting boards so these are the the boards um, that's the top edge that's the bottom edge um, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see that on the camera but there's a, a little groove in the bottom there and that's what the clips um, sit into stack up on one another so this is the effect that you end up with and the clips that we use uh, supplied by Cedral look like that okay so if you can imagine that's sitting on a batten like that then the clip with the, the larger single tongue goes over the top and then screwed in using these are the very slim flathead T15 screws and they get fixed in there and they've got little lugs on the top there which hopefully you can pick up on the camera and they accept that little channel of the next board which slots in over the top of that and so on and so forth. So that is the system. Now, a couple of comments. Um, these clips, whilst very good, um, they can be a little, little bit of a pickle to fit on properly. Um, the top dimension of this seems to change a little bit. Might be because of manufacturing or paint or something. Also might be a slight tolerance thing in the, in the clips, but it's quite important to get them on and make sure they sit properly because sometimes that's very exaggerated, but they can sit and kick like that. So especially when you screw them in, um, because of the torque of the screw pinching up against the bracket, sometimes it can twist it ever so slightly and kick it up. Now, it might not seem like an awful lot, but over a long length, if you've got that in the middle, it'll make it rock. And it means that these little lugs then won't locate on the, on the board above uh, and that'll be flapping around. So that little lug fixes the bottom in and that's quite important. So good idea to be quite studious with it and push that down and make sure that that's really well seated um, as you go along, give a little tap with your, with your screwdriver or whatever before you put your screws in. Um, also, if you don't send these screws in really nice and square to, to your battens, the heads will sit proud. And if you try and squeeze them up to try and flatten them, um, you may well uh, shear the top of them so just worth keeping an eye on that now a little word about about trims um, so these are the the corner trims there's just a little little off cut they come wrapped up let me see if I can pull the uh, plastic off just a protective coating so that's what a corner trim looks like okay that's the profile there and that means that for round your window reveals, etc., cetera, um, your boards can sit in. Now we've gone for a contrasting color, 
gone for the white against the gray, which has worked really, really nicely. We've got white UBBC windows also, so it just helps dress it up a little bit, a little bit more classic perhaps. Um, and it just means that you can turn the corner nicely and you're looking for about a three mil gap between the edge of the profile and your boards. Now, another word about that, obviously this is gonna be fixed in some way. Uh, again, we've used the stainless screws um, to do that because they've got the flattest head. By the time you put a head on there and a clip, it does kick in places. So um, where we've had a four by two on the edge, we've been able to screw that in and then put the clip next to that, um, which means that the board has just been sitting a lot flatter um, within the profile edge. So um, again, would probably go for four by two if I did it again. Um, very clean profiles. Um, I think they're three meter lengths. I think they're all three meter lengths apart from one of them, which I think is the, uh, the uh, aluminium closure. Um, a stainless closure, which I think comes in 2.4s. Um, then when you get above, if you end up doing um, cladding around a window and you're continuing up above it, then you need a starter profile uh, to restart there and to close the edge. So that's what that looks like, a little profile there. And I've done another little bit, which hopefully is later in the video, about how to describe that around the corners. Also slightly curious for a premium product like this to, um, to have to just figure it out and not have a proprietary fixing in any way. That's got holes drilled in the back um, so that any water that gets run down the cladding can drain out over the front of the window. So that's the starter profile there. And then the last profile that I've used is a little closure profile. Um, I've used that up against the hung tile where we're joining with the neighbor. Uh, again, that allows the, the boards to slip in behind that and gives a really neat finish. So they also recommend that you use this around windows. So if you can imagine, you've got a corner profile and then that would go up against your window like that, okay? So you can slip your board in, your cut edge, and uh, then you use colored screws, which is the one thing I've forgotten to show you here. Anyway, they color match to whatever cladding you get, um, and you drill and fix those through. Um, I've only used one of these on the far end where we join the tiles. Around the windows, to save a few pennies, what I've done is I've used uh, just the board, the corner closures, and then a little bit of EPDM um, ceiling strip. So I've cut it just a couple of mil short um, of the, the correct dimension to, to fit into the window reveal, the return. And then I've just attached one, one length of that onto the edge. And then that's squeezed up against the window frame. And that gives a really nice seal. If there's any expansion or contraction, it makes up for it. So you don't have to run any silicon in there or anything like that. Um, an awful lot cheaper than buying um, all these closure trims to go all the way around all the windows. So um, I would recommend that. I think it's, it's been absolutely fine. But obviously, if you're going to buy the book, just go for what Seed will recommend. So those are all the bits and pieces and kind of the assembly of how things go together. Um, the, uh, the boxes of screws come with a whole bunch of these little Torx heads, T15s, in them. Um, presumably because they know you're going to shear a load of them. So, I don't know, they come with you know half a dozen or something. I've bought some extras as well, which seems to have held up a little better. But once you get the hang of it, we've stopped sort of flying through all of them. Um, the other thing that's been um, absolutely essential is getting the right blade for cutting the, the boards. Now, this is a four tooth blade specifically designed for dealing with these kind of boards. Um, you can spend quite a lot of money on these, sort of 80, 90 pounds. This was about 40 pounds, but with the amount of, that we've done, absolutely worth it. Um, you'd be able to do it with another, with a, a regular saw blade, but um, it's definitely the right thing for the job. And this happens to be a, a trend blade and it's held up just fine. So dust is, a bit of a nightmare it does get everywhere and um, we've been outside and we've got the uh, trusty blower which has been great for just blowing out the the, the tools keeping the area clear and um, 
worth using a dust mask when you're cutting. Um, but that's been really useful. So other than that, um, not a lot to say. I would definitely recommend the product. I think it gives a really nice finish. There are a few quirks about it, perhaps not super straightforward in places for, for such a sort of premium expensive product. But um, the overall finish um, I think is very good and I'd certainly recommend it to, to clients and for others thinking about maybe an alternative to UPVC or tile hung cladding or even render. Um, it's a slightly different finish and I think it sits well with what we've ended up with. And um, yeah, overall, great product. So there's a long ramble. Um, I hope that's been useful for, for some of you that are maybe looking at using the product. And um, if you have any questions, um, by all means, um, just fire me a, a message below. Um, but it'd also be great if you could could like and subscribe to the channel. Um, hopefully, we'll be bringing out more videos about this sort of thing and uh, probably help you with your your project. So that'd be great. Thanks for watching, and um, let's see how we get on with the last bit of cladding.